Drawing a monster has got to be one of my favourite things to do. You can do anything you like. Who says you can't have hundreds of eyes, loads of warts and spots all at the same time? And once you've drawn your monster, you can create it for real, out of clay. You can use all sorts of different kinds of materials to create your monster. Your imagination is the limit. So the best thing about designing a monster is that there really are no rules. You could decide to have one eye on your monster, or three eyes, or ten eyes. It's just up to you. I'm going to give this one just one big eye. Maybe he has some spikes on his head. I could make those with toothpicks, pipe cleaners. Maybe a couple of them are wobbly. Those would be great with pipe cleaners. So as I'm drawing my monster, I am thinking a little bit about how I could make it in clay or plasticine. You can see I've given him a slimy body and I've started to draw tentacles. And these could be easily made in clay, particularly if we were to make a little sort of shape out of cling film or tin foil underneath. In fact, tin foil would probably be best. So I'll show you later on how to do that in the video. So as I'm drawing, I'm having a quick think how I'm going to create these things out of 3D objects. And it might be quite fun to have some sort of Maybe they're suckers or spots, warts, something like that all over his body. Those might be quite easy to make with little circles of clay that are stuck on. And once I've done this, I can start thinking about making it in clay. The eyes could be googly eyes that you can buy from craft shops or you can make the eyes out of clay or you could draw them on with a permanent marker. There's lots of options. Here are just some of the things that you'll need to make your monster. However, your creativity and imagination is the limit here. However, you will definitely need some kind of clay or play-doh. You could use even polymer clay or FIMO and set it in the oven. I won't be using that today, but that is something you could do. You'll just have to be careful if you attach things like googly eyes or wings made out of sellotape, which I'm going to show you later on in the video and you make sure that you don't put those in the oven and you attach them after you've set the clay in the oven. Obviously, if you use modeling material, you don't need to put it in the oven, but your monster won't go hard. It will remain soft, so a bit more fragile. You could use air dry clay. That would need a couple of days to dry thoroughly, but that would then give you a more permanent monster. Um, you'll need sort of little sculpting tools to get the details of your monster on. You might want to use some pipe cleaners for wiggly bits, wiggly arms or wiggly sort of spikes coming out of your monster. Obviously pipe cleaners are great because you can cut them to size. Um, you might want some googly eyes. You can get those from craft shops different sizes. You'll need, you might need aluminium foil if your monster has a large area of clay and you don't want to use up all your clay on just that one, say the body. You can create the main shape of the body out of aluminium and then cover that with clay. <clears throat> you might want some toothpicks for spikes and wings. As I said earlier, I've got very cool technique to show you how to make wings out of 
um, fat or wide sellotape and toothpicks. It could also be used for fins and that sort of thing. And then for little details, you again need to use your imagination. But for example, if you've just had a delivery and it's got sort of shredded paper, that could be used for monster's hair or inside its mouth or a tongue. Um, moss from the garden, leaves that are dried. Um, your imagination is the best for this. Bottle caps, buttons for eyes, all these things can be used um, if you have a bit of creativity about you and you want to go a bit wild. So I've already rolled a ball for a green head and I've run out of green clay so I'm going to go with a yellow body. So I'm using modelling material today um, but like I said earlier you could use FIMO, you could use plasticine if you weren't worried about your model remaining soft, uh, you could use air dry clay, it's up to you. So I'm going to form this sort of wiggly body shape starting by rolling that a ball. <coughs> And as I roll, the clay sort of softens a bit in the warmth of my hands and that makes it a bit more malleable and softer. So basically you want to form your body shape, whatever shape you like. Mine's a little bit sort of bendy, so I might create bends in it so that it looks a bit more like my monster. And I'm going to make sure that I make the monster 3D, not flat on the table and squashed, but actually standing up and three-dimensional. To use tin foil as your main shape, you're going to have to tear off a bit and scrunch it up. Let's say this was going to be the tentacle or a long body shape or a horn. You can scrunch that tin foil up into the shape you want and firm it in, squish it into itself so it becomes a sort of solid shape. Once you've done that, you can then take whatever clay you need and you can cover over bit by bit so that you are using less of your clay and the tin foil also gives a firm structure to the body or the tentacle or whatever it is you're covering. So that's how you use this kind of tinfoil armature underneath or inside your clay form. And I want to get the head on and with this stuff it's quite good because it actually just sticks really nicely. With air dry clay you'll need to actually score this bit and you'll need to score that bit and you'll need to use slip which is like a sort of little mixture of clay and water and you'll, you'll put that on there and then you can attach it. So air dry clay is a little bit trickier to use. Once you've attached your head though and you can start thinking about shaping that to whatever form you want. Still want that wiggly body shape. This stuff's lovely and soft to work with. So you can see I've got my slightly wiggly body. I've got a head shape there. And now let's get that eye in. I'm going to put it flat just for now and then I'll stand him up once his tentacles are done. So as I said before you've got googly eyes as an option and with the with this sort of modeling clay they just stick in onto it very nicely. With air dry clay you might want to glue them on with hot glue after the clay is dried 
and with FIMO you'll need to do the same because FIMO needs to go in the oven but for this stuff it's quite easy to stick up them on. So I'm going to do red spots with maybe a little white blob inside. So I've got a little bit of red here. I'm going to take off just a little bit and this time I'm going to roll it with my finger. Roll it in a ball, press it down and pop it on my monster. And I'm going to continue doing that until he's full of red spots. For his eye, I've got a little bit of white and I'm going to roll that with my palm and finger into a ball and then press that ball to squash it. Place it on the middle of his head and then I could later on draw with a permanent marker an eye shape on it or I could even stick a googly eye in the middle but I'm going to draw this with a marker later. Now for the tentacles perhaps I'll do them in red. I've got lots of red clay so let's get some red tentacles. Now the other option with tentacles is of course we could do them with pipe cleaners which might look quite nice. Pipe cleaners are great because you can wiggle them, they've got wire inside and they have fluff on the outside so the wire allows you to bend them. They might look good as tentacles but are they strong enough? It might be that I need to double my pipe cleaner up so that it's a bit stronger if I'm going to use pipe cleaners for tentacles. So I'm going to cut it in half. You can just use the scissors for that. And then I'm going to double up my pipe cleaner so that it's twice as strong and then I can bend it how I like. So there's our tentacle. I'm going to stand the monster up and stick the tentacle in. There we are. Here's my monster so far. You can see I've put the little white dots on with white clay. And now I've got my permanent marker so I can get the eye on. I'm just going to really draw around very lightly because this clay is very soft and get one eye in the middle there. I now want to do the horns on his head and there's different ways to do that. You could cut toothpicks you could colour them first, whatever colour you want the horns. Colour the toothpick with a sharpie or felt tip and then stick them on his head. That's one way of doing it. Or if you want to use clay, you can take a piece of clay off and sort of roll it gently along the top of the toothpick so that you actually have a horn with toothpick holding it secure down the middle. You see there, I'm just gently now rolling it in between my finger and thumb so that the top of the toothpick is covered. Then I can carefully, notice I'm leaving a bit of toothpick bare, I can carefully cut that off. and then the toothpick bit of it can stick into the head of the monster like this. When you stick it in, you might end up removing, messing the horn up so you can just re 
replace it on the top, refix it so that it looks proper again. And that will give you a sort of coloured horn. Um, and you can keep going like that, doing a few of those. Or you could stick uh, pipe cleaners in and bend them. It could be like antennae. Um, I might do a couple of those actually now in different colours. So I've got a couple of nice coloured pipe cleaners. And I'm going to do those either side. Measure them so that they're both the same length. And then I'm going to wiggle them so they're like antennae. And I'm actually going to put a blob of clay on the top, but maybe a different colour, um, perhaps white. So take some white off, roll it into a ball between your palm and finger, and you can actually attach the blob of it onto the end. Looks quite cute. And then you stick it into the head on the other end like this. So now you can see the monster has kind of cute antennae with a white blob on the top. Here's my monster so far. You can see I've added googly eyes to the top of the antennae and a couple of ears or horns over here. But what about if we wanted wings? How would we make those? Earlier on I said that you would need fat tape and toothpicks. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make those wings, uh, which are really very cool. Hopefully you can see, but I've laid a piece of tape out and the sticky side is facing up. I've now pulled off a second piece of sticky cellar tape and the stick, sticky side is also facing up. And I'm going to place the second sticky one slightly overlapping the first one. And now I have to try and get my fingers off. There we are. So there are two pieces of wide cellar tape with the sticky side up. I'm now going to take a few toothpicks and for the wings I'm going to place them like a fan onto the sellotape and you can see immediately they stick there because the sticky side is up. Place a couple more on, maybe one more now. So we have one, two, three, four, five toothpicks on top of two wide pieces of sticky cellar tape. The next step is to cut. Two more pieces of tape to place over that, which is going to be slightly noisy. And I need to find the end. There we are. So I've got the end of the tape, and I now need two similar sized pieces to cover these. So I'm going to cut the first one off now. And I'm placing the sticky side down on top. Now I can touch it. You can see it's not sticking to my finger, but this bit is still sticky because I haven't covered that bit yet. That's what the second piece will do. If you're a child making this part of your monster, you may need adult, adult help for this. 
So now I'm placing the second bit of sticky sellotape, sticky side down. And the last step, you can see already it's potentially going to be a wing, but the last step is to cut around it. And you see I've just cut that end off and I'm going to now cut around the toothpicks so that it creates a kind of wing shape. I'm also going to cut along this end here. So now you can see we have a wing shape. I suppose you could probably add a bit of glitter before you put the second sticky layer of sellotape down, but that's something I don't have as glitter. So if I was to add, let's say, it could be a dorsal fin to my monster. It could be a sort of tail, or it could be a couple of wings. And you just want to really push that in and gently press the clay around it so it holds on. So my monster now has a sort of fin at the back. So, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found some really exciting little ideas and are able to make your own interesting creations and bring some of your imagina imagination to life. Thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe.